Welcome back to Goldmark TV. We are back here in the front room of the gallery today for uh, an impromptu tour of our uh, Michael Rothenstein exhibition. Rothenstein's uh, an artist whose work we have shown you before, but we've not had an exhibition here in this front room. So uh, here's an opportunity to, to really get up nice and close and personal with these pieces and show you some of this work in the flesh. I hope you enjoyed today. We recently took down our uh, Rigby Graham exhibition from this gallery front room space. It was a really successful show. And we weren't quite sure what to do next with this room. We have been operating on an, uh, an appointment only basis uh, for the last couple of months. And we thought, why not take the opportunity to uh, showcase another artist's work who we've uh, been championing for a very long time here at the gallery, Michael Rothenstein whose work we have sent on touring exhibitions recently and was set to be uh, touring this year. Obviously a, a number of the galleries that we uh, would have been showing his work in um, this year have, have been had to close uh, thanks to lockdown. So we thought why not take this opportunity to really show the work here at home in the gallery. Michael Rothenstein was born in 1908 and he died in 1993. So his life uh, spanned the entirety, almost, of the 20th century. And his work spans that history too. There is a, a whole breadth of political, uh, of, of social, of aesthetic and artistic uh, variety and wealth going on in this exhibition. A, a huge range of very, very different prints that showcase how Rothenstein was an artist who really exploded the boundaries of what printmaking meant. He was working largely in the latter half of the 20th century, at a time when print uh, was sort of uh, innovating in, in Britain, when artists were returning to print, not just as a means of reproducing their work, but as a primary mode of expression, as a means of revelation. Some of the works in this show are going to uh, reveal some of the, the core themes, the central subjects of Rothenstein's work. And we'll also see just what a technical virtuoso he was in working with different kinds of printmaking. Today's episode is going to be a whistle-stop tour of Michael Rothenstein's life and his career. If you've not already got a copy, this is the fantastic new book that we published uh, by Mel Gooding on Rothenstein's work. Um, it's absolutely chock full of illustrations of Rothenstein's uh, prints. And the essays in here by Mel, who was a long time friend and critical champion of Rothenstein's work. And the essays in here are, are, are really illuminating. It's a fantastic revaluation of Rothenstein's printed work. So if you've not got a copy, it's £10 plus PNP, uh, do order one. Uh, it's a really fantastic book. Rothenstein was born to a, an artistic dynasty. His father, Sir William Rothenstein, was a, a very well known, regarded uh, portraitist. He was the president of the Royal College of Art. And he was also a collector of art, and um, art was very much in the family. Rothenstein's brother, John, Sir John Rothenstein, would become the, uh, uh, the uh, director of the Tate Gallery, and he was a, a well-known uh, art historian, director at the Tate for almost uh, 25, 26 years. Rothenstein spent his childhood uh, with his family uh, in uh, Gloucestershire, in the Cotswolds. It was a childhood spent in a kind of um, idyllic countryside scene on a farm. And very quickly, as a young boy, it was the sights and the sounds of the farmyard, the sights of the, the cockerels fighting, of butterflies in the fields, uh, the, the churning of the earth uh, by uh, tractors and ploughs, this world of colour and violence uh, and atmosphere um, really impacted on him as a child. He made a number of drawings as a young boy of, of um, uh, scenes inspired by that world. And that's also the world to which uh, he would return in later life as an artist and which he, he lived in, uh, lived in the countryside for almost all of his life. 
The prints that you'll see here today are actually uh, largely from the latter half of Michael Rothenstein's life. As a young man, he developed uh, a glandular illness, myxedema, and, and he spent a number of years recuperating from that. It was a hugely debilitating disease. It, it left him lethargic, it left him depressive. And when he emerged from that period, uh, as a young artist with a burgeoning career ahead of him, it was almost as if he had to make up for that lost time. He emerged uh, a hugely uh, sensitive man, sensitive to the visual world around him, excited by the things that he saw, and determined when he discovered the joys of print in the atelier of Stanley William Hayter, uh, founder of Atelier 17, one of the most famous and important printmakers of the 20th century. It was in uh, an early experience in, in uh, Hayter's atelier that he really discovered the joys and the breadth of what he could achieve in printmaking and discovered that printmaking was going to become his prism, his way of mediating this bright, ecstatic visual world around him. You can probably notice from these three prints here beside me that show some of that kind of rural world, that rural world of rural texture, that what Rothenstein uh, really uh, excelled in was in matching the texture of the real world in the texture of his prints. Very little of Rothenstein's printed work is clean. It's very rarely clear cut. There is overlapping, there is uh, extraordinary texture and, and, and misregistry going on, a wonderful blending of, of colours, overlapping uh, segments. Rothenstein looked at the natural world, the world around him. He saw the texture of, of, uh, of riled up earth, uh, of the, uh, the earth that's violently driven up by the plough and by the tractor, by man-made machines. The, the harsh, uh, uh, splintering texture of cut grain from timber felling. The erosion of sea uh, and salt and salt wind on rocks. Those textures that he saw in the real world around him he brought into the way that he made his prints. So you can see in these very sort of jagged, rough-edged uh, woodcuts, lino cuts, uh, that Rothenstein was able to bring those textures into the world of printmaking. He also recognised the natural world as both a world of life and of death, of exuberant and joyful growth and splendour and flourishing, but also of death, of violence, of, uh, of conflict. You'll see in this print over here uh, an image of a man with an owl. This was to become a recurring image in, in Rothenstein's career. He made a number of prints with this, uh, with this theme. Actually, this is based on a, on a real story. This is uh, based on the photographer Eric Hosking. He was a, a wildlife photographer who, uh, during his career, he went to uh, inspect one of his owl hides that he'd been photographing some owls from and an owl flew out uh, at night time and clawed him in the face. It punctured his left eye and he was left uh, blind in that eye. He had only one eye from that, that point on. It was events like that, scenes like that, scenes that he'd seen as a child on the farmyard of the fighting cockerels that revealed to Rothenstein that the natural world was, was not just a, a sort of paradisal uh, idyll, it was a world of, of contrasts and conflict. And that's what we're going to see in some of these prints. After his introduction to printmaking through Stanley William Hayter in the 1950s, the, the first time that he'd really been shown uh, the breadth of what printmaking could achieve, it was in the 1960s that Rothenstein uh, developed a, a sense of uh, the abstract uh, in his art. As you can see from a couple of these etchings, he already had a very profound understanding of um, the universality of certain symbols, the way that uh, humankind throughout the ages had taken symbols, emblems and ciphers and found meaning in those icons. You can see some of the influences of, of uh, African wooden carving in some of these etchings here, that sense of, uh, of figures and icons uh, holding some kind of magical meaning, some kind of magical significance. 
from the 1960s onwards, he really first started to develop a, an abstract vocabulary, an abstract language that, that drew on those universal symbols. Uh, uh, one that incorporated things like moons and suns, stars, uh, kites, certain recurring patterns that he found in the cultures that he studied. These he explored in a number of different mediums, in, in woodcut and lino cut, uh, but also in screen printing. And he started to bring those different methods together. This was a, a period that, that came to a, a, if not a close, to a sort of a conclusion in the 1960s, the late 1960s, with this fantastic circle series. A number of different prints that used this recurring symbol of the circle uh, and other elements drawn from, uh, from machinery, from industry, from manufacturing, uh, from the urban as well as the natural world in making these bright coloured abstract prints. Rothenstein also discovered that as an experimental printmaker, as a printmaker who enjoyed uh, changing things on a whim during the actual print run, during the, um, the discovery of what was working on a plate, um, he was a capricious artist. He liked to make changes uh, whenever he wanted to, even uh, once a print run, an edition was starting uh, to be produced. So you'll see a number of different uh, colourways sometimes in some of his prints. This made it a real challenge, a, a, a difficulty and a frustration for those trying to, to catalogue Michael Rothenstein's prints, to try and organise them, to work out the, the full edition runs, the, the number of prints that were made, the colourways that were made, uh, as you would normally do with an artist. But it also makes it a real joy as gallerists and for collectors as well, because almost every Rothenstein print has some kind of uniqueness about it. You're never quite sure whether the edition was finished, whether what you have in front of you is representative of what he started making at the start of the print run, or whether it was a, a, a capricious turn, a, a point of whimsy, a, a decision made on the spur of the moment. Rothenstein thought of printmaking, the various different methods of printmaking, from woodcut to lino cut to screen printing and etching. He thought of them almost as instruments. And rather than be a soloist working in one of those mediums, he thought of bringing those instruments together in a kind of orchestra. An orchestra that could uh, make images uh, in which the different voices of these different types of printmaking would either come together in harmony or in discord. He also realised that rather than simply making prints from ordinary plates, an etching from a zinc etching plate, uh, a woodcut from a woodblock, he realised that rather than representing the textures of the natural world in these plates, he could actually bring the natural world into the world of print. He could do that by direct printing, from printing not from plates, but from real life objects. You'll see in a number of these prints uh, the very real texture of wood grain. This has been taken from, um, from cut pieces of wood, off cuts, uh, pieces of raw sawn timber. And he realised that also taking these uh, objects from the natural world, pieces of wood, uh, sheets of metal, metal rings, uh, sheets of plastic, these could not just be brought and used as, as printing plates, but they could actually be uh, textured, they could be abraded, they could be worked on with power tools. Very quickly, the impress of the real world around him was being brought into his prints. These were not representative prints. These were uh, actual uh, shadows, ghosts, uh, uh, impressions from the real world around him. Like many of his fellow artists of the 1960s and 70s, people like Eduardo Paolozzi, Rothenstein shared a, an obsession, a, a, a profound fascination with the culture of his time. He was living at a time of incredible visual saturation, a time of cinema, of the television, of uh, photojournalism, of fashion and sports magazines. And with the innovations in the world of screen printing and photolithography, of bringing those, uh, those photo-visual worlds into the realm of printmaking, 
Rothenstein leapt at the opportunity of bridging these different worlds, these different worlds of media, the different textures, the different tones, and also the varying uh, tensions, the, the political tensions, the sexual overtones, the worlds of sexual violence, of news, of glamour, of, of sordid affairs, uh, the events of the world, uh, both on a, on a grand and, and international scale, but also on the smaller, intimate, personal level. You can see in a number of these prints how that idea of collage, of bringing uh, different objects together that he'd uh, been working on earlier, uh, of bringing the different uh, uh, textures of the natural world, translated itself very, uh, very neatly to this world of montage, this world of bringing together the different visual identities, the different visual clues of the photojournalistic world. One of the things that Rothenstein perceived quite lucidly was the sense that in this world of great visual saturation, when people are being bombarded with news, bombarded with, uh, with affairs, with gossip, with tabloid, the realisation that the private sphere, the, the personal sphere, and that of the public was starting to blur. The line dividing those two worlds was starting to, to blur. That's an idea that has real resonance for us today, particularly with uh, the growth of social media, with uh, the President of America making decrees uh, not from the White House but on his Twitter account. That kind of, uh, of blurring, of, uh, of bringing those worlds together, of looking at where they merge, uh, the television screen that is that medium between the world outside and the person in his sitting room that's played out in a number of these prints that bring those different visual media together. Some of the prints that do that most successfully are those that bring together all the different aspects of Rothenstein's printmaking, of direct printing from objects, from wood, from the, the textures, the grains of wood, and the photographic uh, elements that bring together the sense of symbols, of, uh, uh, of symbology, of emblems, bringing all these different worlds together to create prints that are uh, both literal and representative and figurative and expressive. Works like these, uh, this is the classic RIP, R-I-P. You can see there's a, uh, uh, something happening with that title there, a kind of double meaning going on there. We get both the violence of, of man-made machinery on the natural world, the violence of the natural world in this grain, in the texture of this wood here, the violence of machinery in these, uh, this saw blade and these drill bits and clamps here. This also got to the heart of how Rothenstein uh, could, could work, not just on a, on a representative level, this is not just an image of violence, the actual violence of the image, this powerful movement through this wood that's being almost sort of split apart is represented uh, not just in the image itself but it's actually there in the texture, in the roughness, the abraded surface of this print. It's a violence not just of, of, of symbols, of representation of image, it's a violence in the material texture of the print as well. No more would we see that uh, the idea of the violence of the material and the violence of the image itself come together than in Rothenstein's powerful images of the cockroach. Certain symbols, certain subjects recur throughout Rothenstein's career, but none with quite the vigour, with quite the intensity of the cockerel. It almost became the emblem of Rothenstein's art. You can see it here on the front cover of this book on lino cutting and wood cutting, one of a number that Rothenstein produced. The cockerel brought Rothenstein once again back to his childhood, back to those bright, impactful scenes of his, uh, his early days spent there on the, on the farmyard, um, watching the cockerels fighting with each other in the scrub and dust on the farm. A number of things from that time, from Rothenstein's early childhood, uh, start to, to blend together in his art. Uh, the memories of his father's collection of Indian miniatures, the bright colours of those of his, um, his own uh, German uh, soldier figurine collection. It's the cockerel that uh, stands out from that, uh, from that time, that 
keeps recurring again and again, uh, almost, I think, Mel Gooding described it, compulsively in Rothenstein's art. There was something about the, the swaggering pride of the cockerel, its braggadocio, its need for sexual domination over the roost, that became uh, almost heraldic in Rothenstein's art. It became the symbol of, of violence, of, of imposition, of predation, of splendour and pride. And you can see that in these uh, really powerful prints across here. Um, the, the strenuous uh, working in the wood, the, the beautiful bright colours set off against that wonderful jet black. You can also see that as representatives of the Rothenstein estate, uh, we now deal with, uh, with Rothenstein's work, um, these fantastic woodcut boards down here that you can see that have been used to print some of these colours. It's when you see the boards next to the prints, next to the prints that they, that they work for, Rothenstein would often have a number of different blocks used for a, a single uh, image, uh, blocks that printed different outlines and borders like you might see on this butterfly bird at the side here. It's when you see these two things in, in, in combination, when you see the blocks next to the prints, that you get a real feel for how that vigour translates from the wood onto the print. And that's really the core of Rothenstein's printmaking, of taking that inner experience, that uh, imagination, that sense, that intuitive sense, getting it into the block and from the block into the paper. That was something that he couldn't necessarily do in any other kind of art making other than printmaking. It was printmaking that had a special way of revealing his feelings about a subject, of getting those feelings into and onto the paper in front of him. It's why printmaking remained uh, almost his exclusive uh, uh, interest uh, in the latter half of his career and why he's remembered so fondly as such a fantastic printmaker. What you've seen in this show is really the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Michael Rothenstein prints. We've been dealing in his work for a very long time now and the show that's on here at the gallery at the moment, which you can come and see, do let us know, call in, make an appointment by email and we'll be happy to show you around these pictures. What you see here represents a tiny fraction of the work that we hold and the work that Rothenstein produced. It's a really um, broad, deep and I think resonant body of work, a, a really important body of work. It shows that Rothenstein was not just a provincial artist of Great Barfield in Essex, the, the artist commune where he worked for a number of years among artists like Edward Borden, but it reveals that the, the way that Rothenstein was looking at the world, the way that he was mediating the world around him, the way that he approached printmaking, the way that he approached uh, the visual image was not just groundbreaking but uh, up there with people like Robert Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns, uh, Andy Warhol, Paolozzi, it proved a, a, a very profound uh, anthropological sense of who we are as a people, the world that we live in, and trying in some way through the, the many varieties, the many methods, the many processes of printmaking, of getting that powerful impression of life onto the page. I hope that this show has, has shown a little of how he managed to do that, but please do go and explore more of the works on our website. I'll pick up a copy of Mel Gooding's book. It's a fantastic read. I, I really recommend it. And explore more of this fantastic artist's work. I hope you've enjoyed today. <laughs>